geez, what on earth just happened to Halyard Health? For those of you who don't remember, Halyard's the medical supply company spun off by Kimberly Clark last year. They make surgical and infection prevention products uh, for the operating room, along with a number of other medical supplies. And the company also has a faster-growing medical device business. Beyond that, we own Halyard Health for my travel trust, which is why it's so agonizing for me to see the stock get crushed today, down more than 4 bucks or nearly 12% in the wake of a disappointing quarter. really hurt. This morning, Halyard delivered a one-cent earnings miss off of a 53-cent basis, weaker than anticipated revenues that shrank 6% year-over-year. It still would have been down 3%, even on a constant currency basis. The company's surgical and infection uh, prevention business was down 11%, even as its medical device uh, division managed to post 5% growth. What really, really was dismaying, though, was that Halyard slashed its full-year guidance for 2015, taking a hatchet both to its earnings and to sales forecasts. There's no doubt it was a tough quarter, and to be honest, it was even worse than the previous quarter, which wasn't so hot either. So we have to ask, once the analysts finish cutting their estimates, can the company turn things around going forward once the numbers become low enough to beat, or should it just be dumped and move on? Let's check in with Robert Abernathy, the chairman and CEO of Halyard Health, find out more about its quarter and the company's prospects going forward. Mr. Abernathy, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. It's great to be back. This is our third time on Mad Money in the last 10 months. I just appreciate you letting me come on to share our message. Okay. And it has been a tough quarter. Yeah, let's let's get the message because, sir, um, I'm struggling to figure out why your stock will not drop to the 20s. I think the estimates are still too high. Uh, I think that you talk about the long term, but the short term, uh, I don't see how you can possibly make even these revised estimates. And so, but I want to hear your side. I mean, you, I don't hear buyback. I don't hear acquisition. I just hear short term more pain, and I want to try to figure out whether the pain stops at 20 or does it go to the teens. Well, let me remind you, we've got two businesses. We've got a medical device business, and we've got a surgical and infection prevention business. Right. The medical device business performed very well this quarter. It's right on strategy where we're going to transition the portfolio of this business to more and more medical devices that are growing faster and higher margin. The problem we had this quarter was in our surgical and infection prevention products. We saw some price loss. We saw some market share loss. And we're focused on turning that around in the short term. But we're squarely on task in terms of delivering the long-term strategic shift toward medical devices. We're going to use a strong product portfolio. We're going to use our strong balance sheet where we've got cash to start doing acquisitions early next year. And we're going to continue to very efficiently separate ourselves from Kimberly Clark so that we can get on with doing those acquisitions to create growth within the company. Well, how will you uh, recover from the SNIP from, the, from this prevention business? Because I know you said that Consistent with our historical results, we expect the fourth quarter to be strong in the third quarter. But a lot of, of last year was pumped up by Ebola uh, preventive surgical, and that's going to go away. So why not cut the third and fourth quarter drastically rather than leave them up there? Well, we, we actually usually sell more in the third and fourth quarter than we do in the first half of the year. So there's a natural lift to the business over that time period. We've got some, some business that we expect to pick up over the back half of the year, particularly in our gloves and apparel area. We're going to continue to see strong innovation coming to marketplace. We rolled out a new surgical gown that's, that's we're, we're very optimistic about its growth. We, we rolled out a new uh, exam glove that's doing well in Asia. We've rolled out a new line of face masks that are taking off very well. So a combination of innovation and stronger second half of the year historically, I believe, will cause us to have sequential improvement in the back half of the year. While we continue to focus on transitioning our business to those medical devices and see strong growth in medical devices over the back half of the year. Well, should the company split again and just be in one business that is kind of a cash cow, no growth, and another business that is fast growth? No, the two businesses are very important. The, the SNIP, Surgical Infection Prevention Product, generates a lot of cash. It generates over 50% of our cash. That cash is important so that we can start doing the acquisitions, so that we can grow the medical devices both organically through the, the product lines that we have and through those product lines that we'll be purchasing. So the cash portion funds the strategy, and it's important to keep that. But the surgical infection protection, the, the competition is stiff. And it doesn't seem like that it necessarily has got the cash flow that you need to do any deals, at least this year. I mean, maybe after you stock up some cash, maybe next year sometime? No, we've got good cash. Uh, we got $114 million of cash on the balance sheet. We paid down $50 million uh, of debt in this last quarter. We've maintained the flexibility we need to borrow. So we've got, we've got the position on the balance sheet so that we can continue to grow and do acquisitions. But long term, SNIP really fills out a big portion of our portfolio. It's important to our business. But we've got to get it back on track. It can't under-deliver. We've got to get it back on track. Well, so you do think the estimate, I mean, again, I'm really focused on the estimates, sir, because 
is, you know, this is twice that the estimates have been taken down really badly. And I think that your shareholder base wants very much to believe in you. But, you know, when you overpromise and you underdeliver, you get this kind of decline each time. Oh, absolutely, Jim. I understand that. You know, the shareholders own this company and they hired me as the CEO to deliver returns to the business. And we're focused on doing just that. And how are we going to do it? We're going to continue to grow the strong medical device business, which is fast growing, higher margin. We're going to get focused on innovation. We're doubling our research spend over the next four years to get innovation back into this business. We're going to make sure we shore up our SNIP business by getting new business in the back half of this year and next year. We're going to use that strong balance sheet to start doing acquisition to create growth in the business. That's what I'm going to do to make sure our shareholders get returns from this business. Okay, thank you so much, Robert Aber Abernathy. He's the chairman and CEO of Halyard Health. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Jim. Okay, uh, missed twice. Um, I screwed up on this. It's my fault. Uh, when you miss once, you got to be a little more skeptical. Uh, maybe this time the estimates are finally low enough. Mr. Abernathy, he thinks they are. If they're not, the stock will go still lower. They have money's back here. Right. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get to jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.